It's time now for our children, kindergartners to third graders, to be dismissed to Children's Church. We're grateful today for these flowers which have been given by Hank and Pat Walwyn. As you see in your bulletin there, these, we thank you so much, Henry. These are given in memory of Casey Perkins, their godchild. Casey would have been 30 on the 22nd of October, so we're grateful for that and we join you in your remembrance there. We're also thankful today to have this beautiful rose over here. And uh, the blessed thing. Oh, wait. You're going to serve. Thank you. I saw you over there earlier. I know you're excited this week. Oh, my goodness. So, her, Kim, and husband Lou um, have a new baby. Charlotte Grace, born on Monday night. And I know she's precious. Well, you said there a couple of pictures. And I know uh, Eric got over there to, to see them. I'm so glad. And uh, big brother Mason, how's he doing? He's going to be all right. Huh? Is he almost four? Yeah, this month. He'll be four. I thought it was in November. Let's be remembering the Harrys at this time. At this time. Also, uh, we'll say congratulations to Charlotte Spain and her new great grandson. Bowen and James Spain. She said she can't wait to get her hands on them. They're supposed to be here, I think, around Thanksgiving this year. So we're very, very happy about that. In the way of uh, those who are suffering losses, uh, we especially want to be remembering all of the Spicer family during this time. Gary, I see you here and representing the family today. So many of you see listed these names on page five. We're going to be having a uh, celebration of love this coming Saturday morning at 11 o'clock. Uh, if you can, please come and be supportive of the family. You remember Gary, who was only 56 years old, and he lost his battle with liver cancer. Um, just a little fighter there, but uh, just too much to handle on this earth, and the Lord had received him unto his own this past Monday night. So let's be remembering, of course, Angie, Jordan, Rachel, and Christian in the immediate family. And as we think about his siblings and families, and also, of course, his dear parents, Tommy and Shirley, um, they're, I guess, doing as well as they can. But uh, no doubt, this is incredible loss. It's true there's nothing worse on this earth than losing a child. And so that's what they're going through now. Uh, be also in prayer for the family of Pearl Harper. Um, and we have a funeral service for her here on Friday. Uh, continue, of course, to remember the Harper family. We had a funeral for her on Wednesday. So uh, we've been running a lot of these lately. And I'm hoping this season is over for a while. So let's be in prayer for all of these, of course. In the way of uh, just some updates on some folks on our prayer list here. Evelyn Bandon, uh, she will be, uh, she's scheduled to have a pacemaker implanted this uh, Wednesday morning, so uh, let's pray for Evelyn. Also, uh, she lost her boyfriend to death, and then he passed away on Tuesday, and I know this has been a very difficult time for her. She still cares for her aunt as well, who is 94 years old, I believe, so Evelyn has had a whole lot on her. Carol Donovan was unable to have her pacemaker implanted and ablation surgery on Friday because she got down there, got checked in and everything, but uh, her, uh, she was running a fever, so they couldn't do all of that. So, unfortunately, that's going to have to be rescheduled, and I know it'll be at least 10 days, maybe longer. Let's pray for Carol as she tries to get through this time. We're grateful and praise God that Shirley Morris is back with us. She was in the uh, hospital this time last week, and Shirley had a stent inserted on Monday. Uh, got home Tuesday afternoon, and uh, said she's done pretty well since then. And she told me earlier in the week she was going to be here Sunday. Lord willing, and here you are. We're so thankful, Shirley, that you're back. Also, Ethel Patch, for whom we've all been praying. Uh, Ethel underwent a CAT scan on Friday. 
Um, and uh, she will get results, I believe, on Wednesday when she sees the doctor. So let's pray for that. Um, it's possible it's related to the colitis, but we don't know. We pray whatever it is, it's treatable. And remember her. And her take, too, is he's back home, got home on Thursday after several weeks of care and health care. And uh, her, we're glad you are able to be back with us in your rightful place over there. So, uh, indeed, for all of these and so many others, we, we do lift up to the Lord today and ask blessings upon each one. This morning, as we prepare to observe the Lord's Supper together, uh, I'd like to read a passage. Um, for me, it's a, it's, a, it's a real Thanksgiving passage. I've actually used this before in a sermon. No, I'm not repeating a sermon. Don't Don't worry. Uh, I'm trying to earn my pay this week, but uh, we are here in this 17th chapter of Luke, and we find, of course, Jesus here on his way, and the ministry he's about well into it by now in this chapter, beginning in verse 11. On the way to Jerusalem, he was passing along between Samaria and Galilee, and as he entered a village, he was met by ten lepers who stood at a distance and lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. And he fell on his face at Jesus' feet and giving him thanks. Now he was a Samaritan. Then said Jesus, were not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. We pray blessings upon this reading of God's Word and this Gospel message today. You look in your bulletin, you probably sometimes see this. Um, we try to have something every week, just above some of our record keeping and just above some of uh, the prayer list on page three. Did you know? Did you know? Did you know we often look at Thanksgiving backwards? We think of Thanksgiving as thanking God for something that has happened to us already. The real purpose of giving thanks, though, is opening the door to even greater blessing. Thanksgiving becomes a window through which God's love shines. There are a number of approaches you can take to the passage of Scripture here from Luke. In an earlier sermon, I took one approach. There are some who take the approach of which I like to, the fact that these lepers who are outcasts, the fact that Jesus says the one who came back was a Samaritan. We don't know how many of the other nine were Samaritans, but we do know the one who came back was a Samaritan. Samaritans and Jews despise one another. The Jews despise them. And yet, here they are together. Because they have a common crisis, don't they? Sometimes that brings us together, doesn't it? In times like no other. When our land, when our country is invaded, we tend to come together. Democrats and Republicans play softball together. And we do things together. The church sometimes comes together when there's a crisis, whether it's a building that burns to the ground or whether it's a pastor who leaves abruptly or whether it's a case of unrest within the church. I'm not going there today, but I did want to mention those things to you. It's a little different approach. Maybe call it a backwards approach. Thus the title of the sermon for the meditation. Meditation, you know the difference between a meditation and sermon? 20 minutes. About 20 minutes, yes. Yeah. 
<laughs> we're hoping. <laughs> but seriously, if you want to follow, look at the back of your bulletin. I, I've got three quick points today. First of all, faith brings blessings. Faith brings blessings. Here they were, ten wretched, forsaken, disheartened men. They were hopeless. They had leprosy. That was a disease for which there was no cure. In fact, leprosy was a death sentence that was carried out just a little bit at a time. An arm now, a leg later, or maybe an ear, slowly deteriorating. Because the disease was thought to be highly contagious, lepers were driven out of town where they couldn't associate with anybody. These men were hopeless and helpless and alone, but they formed a fellowship among themselves, as I alluded to earlier. One day they heard about Jesus and their hopes began to rise. They reached the point of believing, so they began to dream. In spite of a hopeless disease, they began to feel maybe there was a chance to live. Through fellowship, these ten lepers had the courage to keep going. Then they met Jesus and said to Him, Master, have mercy on us. Everyone would have told them that they were about to die, that it was useless to ask for help. If they had believed them, then they would have died. But they came to our Lord, and they took Jesus at His word that all things are possible to Him who believes. Jesus saw a way to test their faith. He said to them, go show yourselves to the priests. They could have looked at each other and said, well, nothing's happened to us. We're just the same as we were. Instead, they did what he said. They obeyed him. And as they went, the blessing came. They were cleansed. And a tremendous experience. When God tests our faith, he always gives us a challenge we can meet. We can meet. And just as God provided bread for the children of Israel as they made their way through the desert, God will always guide us. Charles Allen shared that he was with Billy Graham in his second crusade. Graham conducted that crusade in Augusta, Georgia. And Billy was just a young fellow. Alan went on to say that since that time he has said to me, I never dreamed God would give me the ministry he's given me today. I never would have dreamed it. I just said, God, I'm going to give you all I have now and you lead the way. You see, that's the way it works. We give God what we have and he does the rest. Faith brings. Blessings. In the second place, blessings bring joy. Joy. There were ten lepers. They all asked Jesus for healing and they were all healed. But there was a key difference in one of them. Nine of them received healing and went their way. Only one took the time and made the effort to come back and say, thank you. I don't know about you, but I have a feeling that our Lord had tears coming down His cheeks when this one came back and He asked, were not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Why didn't the nine come back? I suspect one reason is because of their pride. Perhaps they thought a lot of people have leprosy and it takes their lives, but we have the power to overcome it. I have a feeling they went their way and went around saying, look what I've done. To have returned to thank Jesus would have kind of deflated their ego. It's a common problem. We don't give credit to whom credit is due. 
certainly when it comes to the Lord God. The reason a lot of people don't experience gratefulness is because of their egos. Instead of giving thanks, they say, look how great I am. But when they do that, they miss out on the joy. There's the joy of the Lord. That's our strength. Did you know that half of the pilgrims died in the very first year they were in America? That first winter was incredibly cold and they were very much underprepared. Prepared. Dangers were lurking, lurking everywhere and yet at the same time those pilgrims didn't let their circumstances obscure the blessings of God. They didn't, did they? They didn't let their hardships rob them of their joy. And they had great joy because they were in America and they were free. Blessings bring joy. And then thirdly, joy increases faith. Were there not ten healed? Where are the nine? When the Lord looks down on all the people in the world, does He look at us and say, look at this person, this family, or this business. I poured out my blessings upon them, but they don't have time to thank me. They don't even remember who I am or the things I've done. They don't express joy, the joy that would increase their faith and thus their thanksgiving. The very act of coming to church. Coming to church today and celebrating the Lord's Supper. It's a gesture of thankfulness. It's similar to the healed lepers returning to see and to thank Jesus. You could have done something else this morning. You got an extra hour sleep, but you could have kept on sleeping for one thing. But you came to church to say, thank you. The leper received a physical blessing the first time, but think about this, when he came back the second time, he received an even greater blessing. Jesus said to him, rise and go. Your faith has made you well. The man learned that spiritual blessings are more important even than physical blessings. Sometimes we don't believe that. But look around at the people you know and ask yourself, do physical blessings make them happy? Most of the time the answer is no. When they receive the physical blessing they desire, they fail to express joy and have their faith increased to give thanks and as a result, they fail to receive a spiritual blessing. Two old friends met each other on the street one day. One looked pitifully sad, almost on the verge of tears. His friend asked, what in the world has happened to you, my friend? The sad fellow said, well, let me tell you, it all started three Three weeks ago, when my long-lost uncle died, and he left me $40,000. Wow, that's a lot of money. Yes, but you see, two weeks ago, a cousin I never even knew died, and he left me $85,000, free and clear. Hey, that sounds to me like you've been very blessed. You don't understand, he interrupted. Last week, my distant great aunt passed away. I inherited almost a quarter of a million dollars from her. Now the man's friend was really confused. Then why do you look so dejected? To which he replied, This week, nothing. <laughs> nothing this week. 
That's the problem with receiving something on a regular basis. Even if it is a gift, we eventually come to expect it. The natural tendency is that we receive a gift, if we receive it long enough, we come to view it almost as an entitlement. I've been through some of that entitlement stuff with my own children. We feel hurt, even angry, if we don't receive it any longer. It's the same way with the blessings God gives us every day. I don't deserve my comfortable home I live in. I don't deserve the dependable car I drive or the clean water I drink. But after receiving these gifts and a multitude of others for years, I sometimes fail to be grateful. I've come to expect these good things. And when one of them is removed for a short time, like the water or the electricity or the internet going down, I get upset. Let's make an effort today to recognize the blessings of the Lord, those blessings we've come to take for granted. Come thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Thanksgiving is much more than looking back on the blessings you've received. Thanksgiving is looking forward to the blessings you can receive. The lepers who were healed and did not think Jesus had the blessing of healing, but they missed the blessing of joy in relationship through faith. At this Thanksgiving season, we're going to be going through this all month. At this Thanksgiving season, don't forget your blessing. Don't let day-to-day -day blessings escape your sight. And don't let your blessings cause you to forget to be thankful. Instead, give thanks and remember your faith has made you well. You see the wonderful cycle? Faith brings blessings. Blessings bring joy. Joy increases faith, which then in turn brings more blessings. Let's keep it going. Today as we prepare to observe our Lord's Supper, consider with me this brief account. A young man recently returned from military duty in the Middle East. For several months, he had served in a place of great danger in very unfamiliar and uncomfortable surroundings. When he talked about his joy upon being home, he talked of the simplest things. His recliner fit like a glove. And his bed was nothing short of luxurious comfort. He played ball with his son for an hour and enjoyed his favorite meal across the table, table from his wife. The touch of her hand, he said, was beyond description. The greatest comfort he'd ever known wasn't anything elaborate. The greatest comfort was simply being home. It was the comfort of having familiar surroundings after a very dangerous journey. The disciples and the close-knit circle around Jesus 
thought they had lost him. They had called him Messiah and life had been wonderful when Jesus was around. Suddenly there was the cross. And for them it was all over. The grave sealed their hopes and the comfort was shattered. Then came the cry, He's alive! He's alive. And Jesus was in their midst. He came with open hands, standing among them, fixing them breakfast, walking with them, encouraging them, thrilling them, leaving them with the smiles of a man who had come home from war. Today, wherever you've been, whatever you've been going through of late, on your journey, the Lord's Supper, this is an opportunity to come home. Come home. The battle out there may have been quite difficult. Surely it was. Maybe you didn't win every fight. But here, here is forgiveness and grace and the open arms of home. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father and Lord, as we come to your table today. Father, make us grateful and thankful for all the blessings we have in life. Life abundant and eternal. Life in your Son, Christ Jesus. May we reflect upon those today and consider the price that was paid for our joy and our salvation and the blessings we have every day. May we never forget. We thank you for the sacrificial love shown through the giving of your one and only Son, Jesus Christ. In His name we pray. Amen.